Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Today's video isn't going to work quite the way I'd hoped. I had a lot of camera problems and uh, the projects just didn't want to line up and work properly. But I figured I'd bring you guys along, show you what I got into, and uh, hopefully you don't make the same mistakes I did if you're trying to follow along uh, with these modifications too. Thanks for watching. In today's video, we're going to be working on my Megamoto 212 mini bike that I purchased from GoPowerSports.com and uh, the engine that I purchased from Harbor Freight Tools. My plan is to perform a few uh, yeah, little modifications to this engine, uh, tweak up the performance a bit. Before we dig into doing any kind of modification, I'd really like to get a baseline performance. How is this thing performing right out of the box with, uh, with no changes made at all? So let's take it for a little ride. I'm not sure how well the phone is going to show up on the screen. Definitely I can see it. Looks good. What I plan on doing with the phone is putting a speedometer app up on it and uh, seeing if we can record it with the camera. Anyways, let's uh, fire the bike up and we'll take it for a little run down a uh, closed strip of uh, pavement here that I have access to and uh, we'll see how it performs. Fuel on, choke on, ignition on. Oh, it's just so hard to start. So we're, there we go, 39 miles an hour. That's that's pretty good for a little bike with bone stock engine. I don't think any of the modifications uh, that I've got planned coming up in the short term are really gonna do a whole lot to top speed because that's the governor that's preventing us from going any faster, not the, uh, the power of the engine. We'll get there quicker, but we won't uh, actually be able to go any faster until the governor comes out. I do plan on doing that, but uh, not immediately. First step, however, I would like to get the charge coils installed and uh, connected up so that we have functional headlight. Let me uh, get some tools, etc. sorted out and I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to start turning wrenches. First step is we've got to get the, uh, the fan shroud off. I need to get that uh, big nut off there. Having some issues with the memory card and the camera. Hopefully you guys are, uh, are getting all of this. Anyways, we've got our um, flywheel, the fan off, the starter cup off. I've uh, threaded the nut back on part way. We've got uh, a nice big pry bar that we're gonna stuff in here. Put some pressure on the back side of the flywheel. And we'll give it a couple of good whacks. There we go. The nut off and there's the flywheel. And we have a problem. I bought lighting coils specifically so that we can get the, uh, the headlight working on this. But you'll notice that there are no magnets on the inside of this flywheel. I think I'm gonna have to get another flywheel. Not a big problem. Uh, for today though, we will get the charge coils mounted and get the wiring all tucked up nice and neat so that uh, changing the flywheel will be an easier thing to do. Charge coils, that's what we're working on today. The rest of this, uh, a little bit of a teaser, some performance parts for another video. Here we have four um, threaded bosses that uh, we'll be attaching the, uh, the charge coils to. And we've got our charge coils that's in the lines of that. And the single wire needs to work its way out behind these uh, tins without getting itself wrapped around the uh, crankshaft. And likewise, our second charge coil 
will fit in something along the lines of that. On the way here today, I stopped at the uh, one of my local industrial supply houses and uh, picked up some bolts. It looks like it's going to work. That's going to need some Loctite on it. Before we get too carried away routing things, I do want to uh, verify that we're not going to run into troubles with the charge coils interfering with the flywheel. So we'll slip it on. And nope, we don't have any interference. So those charge coils should work if we had magnets on the inside of the flywheel. Let me go grab some Loctite and we'll bolt those charge coils down where they need to be and we can hook them into the wiring system. Remember the tube of blue Loctite that I couldn't find in my garage? Well, that's because it was out here at the storage building. See how it's uh, kind of a cloudy blue? That is because it uh, has been allowed to freeze. Ooh, that's way too much. Yes, it doesn't look like normal Loctite, but it still works. We'll give those a, a final snug up with a ratchet rather than using a nut driver. And we use a calibrated forearm to give those a nice little Nice little snugging. Now we need to rope some wires. So if we come out there, there's a little bit of a hump in the tin and can sneak out beyond. This has a nice uh, insulator on the outside of the wire, so I don't think we're gonna get into too much trouble there. Let's uh, put a tie wrap around that so that it kind of stays back where it needs to be. And I think that should get our wiring done quite nicely. Got a nice little tie wrap, that'll go around there. And then we give that a nice little Yep, there we are. Now out our front here, we've got our two charge wires, one there and one there. And we need to find the two voltage regulator wires, which are those two there, and then you get plugged in. Of course, it's down and behind, where you guys can't see what's going on. But Now, of course, we get into the AC versus DC situation with wiring. Uh, essentially, what we've got here is AC coming off of these charge coils when we have a magnet. We've got AC being generated by these charge coils as the magnet goes around. Uh, we'll get a uh, charge pulse and the, the frequency of that AC will be directly tied to the RPM of the engine. As a matter of fact, you could use that as a uh, an input to a tachometer. Uh, in a lot of situations, they do that. And uh, then the little box that's down in here is a regulator rectifier, and it basically turns it into a pulse DC. If we had magnets, uh, we would likely see at idle uh, the headlight would be pulsing. Uh, one way you can fix that is to put some kind of filter capacitor in the circuit. Probably what would work well would be a uh, car stereo noise filter. And kind of a thing about so big around, about so long. You could just mount right up here above the, uh, above the regulator rectifier. And that would hopefully smooth out the pulses going to the headlight. Now, unfortunately, this isn't working quite the way I had intended, but we'll make do with what we have. So we've got our, basically a key that sticks out the back of that, has to engage with that hole. And then we've got our three holes that engage with the pins. That locks in place. We take our big nut, snug up the main nut, and now we'll jam the flywheel. Give that a good tightening to hold it in place. Now we can put the cover back on. As I said in the first video, be careful. There's springs and rods in here that are attached to the governor assembly. If you pinch one of those incorrectly, you will essentially end up with uh, the motor running at full throttle when it first starts. Not a good thing. Well guys, this project certainly didn't work out the way I had intended it to. I do have some good ideas for how to fix the problem. I've got a few parts on order and hopefully we will be able to get this lighting coil working the way it's supposed to. Thanks a lot for stopping by, checking out this video. Can you give me a uh, like, subscribe, comment, ring that bell icon so you get notified when more videos from Doug Massey Garage get posted? Appreciate it if you could do all that and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next mess. Thanks for watching.